Hey, Aaron, was there a point in time where you thought that Corey had no hit stuff and could potentially take it the distance? I don't know if it was the questions before the game, but for some reason it popped in my head in the first inning. I'm not kidding you. Um, I mean, I, I've never been been in one. I, you know, and I've played in a lot of games, now managed in a lot of games, um, never been on the receiving end, never been on the on the winning end. I think I've been in the booth for a couple. Um, my dad caught a perfect game here in 1984 in Arlington. Um, that was so much fun to be a small part of and, and be on the team to see Corey go out there and spin that. Um, it, it truly was a privilege. And, and, you know, I had butterflies in that ninth inning. I'm getting a little emotional now. Even just getting to witness that was, was really, really special. And to see, um, you know, his teammates and the excitement of everyone for Corey and, just the excitement for themselves being a part of such a thing. And um, man, what a, what a performance, what can you say? And, and I'm, I'm just so happy for him. He's such a pro and we're talking about a guy that's been an amazing pitcher in his career. And um, he's, you know, he's got another defining and special moment. Hey, Aaron, you mentioned the butterflies. Obviously, you're not on the mound, but just what are those nerves like in the eighth and then in the ninth inning as you're wondering, is he going to be able to complete this? Yeah, and, and you know, by the way, the game's in the mound. It's two to nothing. You know, it's not, you know, we're not cruising to victory here. This is, you know, every pitch is magnified even more because, you know, it's it's a tight ball game. and um, But it's, you know, I, I think it's, you know, one of the reasons we do this is is to have those feelings of the you know those comp competitive moments or you know where you where you do have those butterflies and i know being you know our fielders you know uh a lot of good plays there um you know i felt like in the final few innings waiter getting some really good jumps in the outfield a couple good plays in the infield by dj and uh geo and i told glaber i'm like you'll be in that image forever throwing that final out and he said man I was nervous and 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 that's the thing I could imagine being playing behind him and just having that anxious nervous feeling um but just really really happy for him and, um man fun, fun to witness does the happiness and excitement get amplified even more knowing how much he had a battle to get back to try to regain his old form with injuries that's certainly a part of it um you know, I, I mean, I'd like to think with any of our guys, you know, no matter, everyone's got, you know, a, a story. Um, I think the one thing that, you know, with Corey is, you know, he's he's come here and, you know, I don't want to say fit in well, because that's a given. He, he's just become entrenched in our culture and embraced in, in the clubhouse. I think beloved by everyone. Um, and, and so... I'm excited for him and his story and what he's been through as a Cy Young Award winner, one of the dominant pitchers of the game, obviously coming back from what he's been through the last couple of years to work to this point. Um, of course, I'm excited for that. But, you know, I, I think I, I could paint that picture with a lot of our guys. And um, But tonight, you know, is – we celebrate Corey Kluber in, in a masterful performance, pitch efficient. You know, you know, I looked up at one point, you know, was, you know, he had six strikeouts and 40 something pitches in four days. Like he was just so efficient and, and that did such a good job of keeping them off balance. I thought hit, him and Higgy were great together tonight. And uh, again, just, just a lot of fun to be a part of. We go next to Eric Bowler. Aaron, you mentioned in the first inning, it crossed your mind. Was there something with his stuff that just jumped out at you that it was particularly electric tonight? No, not not really. Uh, you know, I say that I I could have easily said something to Mendy. I told him afterwards, I'm like, hey, I was thinking at first. So you have those things cross your mind every once in a blue moon. Um, not necessarily. I, I mean, I certainly thought he matched up well with, you know, I felt like if he was really mixing his – pitches like like we've seen him do recently um 
you know, uh, I, I felt like he could navigate and, and certainly pitch effectively. But I think his his the use of the cutter, the sinker, the curveball, the changeup all played a significant part in, in tonight. And I think he did a really good job of, you know, keeping them off balance, keeping them guessing. Um, you know, and I think it's a tribute to to really having command of four pitches. Can you go next to Brendan Cuddy? Aaron, were there any moments tonight where you kind of had that heart in your throat feeling where you were like, oh, no, this is the one that does it? <laughs> um, you know, when Dahl first hit the ball um, to right, I, I got a little nervous, like, oh, that's going to be down the line, even though I know it was a little off the end of the bat. I just felt, But I, as soon as I looked up, Wader got such a good jump on the ball, and, and it turned into a fairly routine play because of the jump he got on the ball. So that one, I got a little nervous. You know, Find my, I found myself in the last two innings, every ball that was hit, you think it's, you think it's destined for, for, to be a hit when, when probably it's not, I think just per, because you're probably a little bit more emotional in the moment. Thank you. Can you go next to John Schwartz. Aaron, before the game, you said that uh, Corey had been on a progression of his command game better and better. Uh, I assume you're disappointed to see that streak can't come to an end tonight, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the the one, you know, I think the one walk was a four-pitch walk where he just, you know, lost his own there for, like, unexplicably almost, you know, for, for what he was toiling out there tonight and it, just how sharp he was all night, just four pitches just out of the blue, out of the zone. But, you know, other than that, it was it was just a special you know, kind of a clinic on, on pitching. And, uh, yeah, again, just fun to witness. When you have someone hitting that corner the way he was on, on either side um, all night like that, I mean, how are you able to see from the dugout really when he's on that corner? Or are you just kind of taking for on faith kind of what the umpire is saying at that point? Yeah, very difficult here. It, you know, as, as awesome as this place is, it's a completely different and unique look from the dugout, especially, you know, in, in making my you – know, ball strike judgments, you know, from the side. We're so far up the third baseline. You know, I'm right behind, essentially right behind the third base coach there. Um, you know, almost, I, I guess, a little akin to, to Fenway as far as the, how deep they are down there. So it's a different view and, frankly, something that – and I think I think I was asked in, in the first game here, you know, about some of – you know, about Garrett. And it, it, it's hard to get your normal read – on some pitches from that angle. It's a little bit different than, you know, what we're accustomed to, you know, 80, 90% of the time. You can go next to Tom Merriam. Aaron, this was the sixth no hitter in Major League Baseball this season, seven if you count the Bumgarner seven inning. Why do you think there have been so many no hitters this season? Well, uh, you know, I was asked that before the game and, and, uh, you know, I think it's a lot of things. I think first and foremost, I think pitchers, there's a lot of great pitchers right now. Pitching is, is, is really good. Um, I think, I think pitchers more than ever, um, you know, based on information, know exactly what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are. I think they're outfitted with the absolute right rep repertoire for, for their skill set. So you don't have a lot of guys going out there throwing pitches that they probably shouldn't throw because you can analyze everything so much. You're able to, you know, make little adjustments and learn things in real time almost um, with, you know, how things, how the ball spins and how, you know, what, what you should be doing a little different or whatever. And then I think the game plans, um, you know, are, a lot more spot on than ever, probably. Can you go next to Bruce Beck? Aaron, is this a little bit like a, a fairy tale in terms of what he's accomplished and how he's come back and everything that's gone into this, like in terms of being unexpected, I guess, going into this year? I don't know about fairy tale, Bruce. Um, you know, this is a, you know, it's not a guy that that had debilitating 
crushing pitcher injuries. You know, they're, you know, got hit with the line drive, kind of freakish, you know, the lat, you know, that he had not something that, you know, once you return from, you know, these aren't debilitating things that, you know, necessarily can wreck a career. You know, this is just, he missed a lot of time and we're talking about, you know, one of the great pitchers of this, you know, last decade. So, um, so I don't know if I'd go fairy tale. I mean, it's a great story with obviously some of the trials he's been through and not having pitched much of the last two seasons. Um, but this is a guy who's great at what he does and is in great shape, is healthy. And, and now we're seeing, you know, the fruits of, of a guy that really knows what he's doing and, and works really hard at his craft. You go next to Dan Martin. Aaron, you touched on it a little bit before, but you, you put uh, Tyler Wade in the game when Lamar got hurt and just the impact that he made on the game. What uh, what did that mean? Yeah, it was huge. I mean, obviously a huge at bat there where, you know, three, two counts, stings the ball in the gap. Um, and obviously his speed gets him to third base. So he's able to score on the sack fly. Um, you know, I thought he played really well in right field. Um, I thought he got some really good jumps and closed on some balls. You know, that, you know, plays that seem pretty easy and routine. I think a lot of that was because of the jumps and, and the athleticism he has to turn them into easy plays. And obviously, he hasn't played a lot of outfield this year for us. Um, but, I, you know, I think the skill set that he brings to the table was certainly uh, on display tonight. And, uh, you know, he was certainly a difference maker in our game. You can go next, Marley Rivera. Hi, Aaron. Obviously, it's not your personal accomplishment, but where does this moment rank in your career? It's up there. It really is. I mean, I'm honestly, I'm still processing it and, and emotional because you do very much feel a part of it. You know, we, you know, we're family. You know, we, we go through so much together. And, you know, one of the great things about this job is, um, you know, you get to know these guys and you want it so much for them. You want a, a great joy when, when, when your players go out there and have success because you know that all that goes on behind the scenes, all that goes into, you know, being great at this game, as hard as this game is, as, as humbling as this game, and as much as this game, I don't care who you are, is going to knock you on your butt, you know, when you when you see guys that you you're grinding with every day and you're fighting with every day go out and do something really special um you know it's you, you feel a part of that in a small way and and uh you know it it makes you happy so where it ranks i don't know but it's it's up there it really is and there is there a sense of validation because coming into this season it was all about Garrett Cole and the rest in your rotation. And now here's Corey Kluber, what he has accomplished. Um, I don't know. I mean, I mean, obviously I know that story and that narrative, but I don't think that's really permeated with those guys. Corey Kluber knows who he is, knows what he's capable of. And I would say the same goes for the rest of the rotation. And, and frankly, um, you know, we've seen the rest of the rotation for the most part, you know, have their share of success already in this season. So I think we all understand, you know, the greatness that, you know, we have in an ace in, in Garrett Cole, but I don't think any of the rest of our starters, uh, I don't think that affects them. And, and I think partly because I think they're really confident in what they're doing and, and we're seeing that. We have Kyle Higashioka waiting, so we're going to take a final one from Lindsay Adler. Aaron, um, what what was Mike Harkey saying in the in the dugout tonight? How was he handling this? Um, who's that? Oh, that's you. <laughs> um, he was good. We, you know, he he was great. You know, he didn't. He, I, you'd have to ask him that. You know, you know, I did say to him. <laughs> I turned to him before the eighth, and I said. You know, if something happens, we get in trouble here. I was telling him, you know, who I wanted up. And he gave me a look like, shut up and walk away. <laughs> um, 
you know, I thought he was going to punch me, but, and then, and then going into the ninth, you know, we, we, we had a brief moment, like, Hey, if, if we're going to have Chappie up, we need to have him up now. And, and just so he's ready, just in case we need something. So uh, that was about the only conversation. Uh, I, I mean, I guess, funny conversation that we had, <laughs> um, but he was terrific. Uh, he's been great, um, you know, coming down and obviously he knows these guys so well and, is is such an important part of our our you know pitching program and uh so he was terrific and i'm sure this is a moment i know that he's going to save her for for a long time too all right thank you for the time aaron we have carly